Faith Ringgold began quilting out of necessity. She enjoyed sculpting in wood and clay, but the dust provoked her asthma, so she started experimenting with combining fabric, painting, and storytelling. Today, you will create your own quilt pattern out of paper and paint. You'll need the following materials. Construction paper, glue stick, scissors, pencil, crayons, paints, paintbrush, and a cup of water. And you can also print out the quilt reference sheet to help you get started with deciding on what patterns you need. You don't have to use this reference sheet if you don't want to. It's just to helpful to get some ideas. To begin, you'll need a sheet of construction paper. Fold the construction paper with the point going down. See? Watch again. Then take your scissors and you cut off the extra strip there. It should be a rectangle. When you open it up, you'll have a perfect square. I'm looking at my sheet for ideas. Taking a second sheet, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Now I have two sheets of paper in squares. It's helpful to fold them into sections, as I can make even triangles this way. Notice how I have four triangles? Cutting along those lines, I will now have four separate triangles, each in equal lengths. You can use those triangles to place them on your original sheet of paper, or you can cut those in half. Play around with what you like. I kind of like the blue sections there, so I'm going to glue them on. Quilts tend to work in opposites, so if you glue a color on, you may want to do the opposite side of it. Hmm, I've got these extra ones. If I fold them in half, I can get some smaller triangles. Experiment with folding and cutting to get equal parts. See how you like it. Before you glue something down, hold it above there and see if that's where you want it to go. If you're working in a reference, using the reference sheet, you can copy those designs. I'm gonna get two other sheets of construction paper and I'm gonna do the exact same thing again, getting my equal squares. This time I wanna get some even smaller triangles. So I'm gonna keep folding my paper in half until I get some really small triangles. That looks about right. Open it back up and cut along the folded lines. Don't worry if your cuts are not perfectly straight. We just want them close enough. Decide how many you want. I suggest not throwing away your extra scrap paper as you may decide to use those later on. Figure out where you want them to go. You are the quilt designer, so you get to decide how you want it to look. I've got red and yellow. And remember I said quilts often work in opposites. I'll do the opposite here. Yellow on one side, red on the bottom. Play around with how you want it to look. You can cut these even further and make them smaller. If I wanted to, I can even cut those in half again and make an even smaller triangle. See? Keep going. Once you've got your quilt decided, we're going to detail it using some crayons and watercolors. Since quilts often use mixed patterns, this is a great way to decide how you want your quilt to look using the crayons. I'm thinking of something simple, just stripes and polka dots and zigzags. But your quilt can have flowers, hearts. Take a look at the fabrics around your house and be inspired by which fabric you would want to make a quilt out of. You'll realize that there's lots of patterns out there. As I draw my patterns, I want them to go in similar directions. That way it looks like a piece of fabric versus just me coloring on top of something.
try thinking about which color crayons stand out on your construction paper too. You may need to pick darker colors. It just depends on the color paper you use. I don't suggest using markers because when we go to watercolor, the markers may bleed. But you can always put watercolors on top and then use markers afterwards. If you don't have watercolors, you really don't need to do this step. I just like the way it looks more like a painting. And since Faith Ringgold mixes her media by often combining painting and sewing, I like to work in this artist style. It helps me to learn how artists think and how they're not afraid to use different materials. But you can just make yours a paper collage, you can just use the crayons, or you can use the paints. Using that reference sheet, try drawing some of the patterns and see if you can get them. Challenge yourself. Think about what's the most complicated quilt pattern you can come up with. Then pretend if you had to sew them, how easy or difficult it might be. If you've sewed before, you'll know that some parts of sewing are easy and some parts are complicated. When you're done, figure out which way you want it to go. And don't forget to sign your name at the bottom.